Okay, so um, nice to see you all uh, once again. It's a bit funny, kind of, actually. Um, Betson came to Lithuania and bought Tony Bird, and Kaido from Betson came to Lithuania and ate Victoria from Tony Bird, yeah. most probably. Uh, Victoria is actually, Victoria from Tony Bird had to uh, be with us today, but uh, she's sick of it, so Kaido was very helpful to join us because he is uh, actually the one who is responsible for Betsafe's brand in the whole region, in the whole Baltics. So he, he was very uh, kind to, to to be here uh, instead of Victoria. So, um, let's start with Latvia. Um, actually, well, I must confess, I am literally baking legal memos currently on Latvia because Latvia is on fire for the last, let's say, uh, month or so. So, uh, we have the, the first person to, you know, to answer about that kind of a thing. Uh, Sigmund Birne, she is the, the director of the, of the um, gambling authority of Latvia, so she is the best person actually to, to, to answer these kind of questions. So let's begin with Latvia and then we'll move to, to Estonia. So, what's going on? What did you do? <laughs> situation in Latvia now in, in gaming business. Uh, yeah, uh, some a few months we, we, we are in, in, how to say, in trouble <laughs> because uh, as, as all over the Europe uh, we have uh, also changes in our government, in, in our parliament and uh, some of political parties uh, which uh, start their political way in, in, in Latvia uh, they decided that the gaming is not entertainment, but it is uh, mostly uh, addiction. And uh, it, it is necessary to make uh, changes in, in, in gaming business in Latvia. Uh, first of all, it, uh, it covers uh, language gaming. And uh, the first decision was already uh, one year ago when uh, our Capital Liga um, decided uh, that uh, there must be sh uh, closed all gaming halls uh, in, inside of the center of Riga. It is the northern uh, 40 uh, for the for <laughs> gaming halls. And of course, it's, it's a big amount of machines. Uh, so there are started a number of uh, court cases concerning this decision. But uh, the, the, last, uh, the last information is that, uh, how I said, political parties uh, who take part in uh, parliament, uh, one of them decided and they collected uh, the signatures from the, from the population that, uh, yes, of course, it is a it is bad situation with gaming in Latvia and it is necessary to close uh, all gaming premises all over the Latvia. I mean, land-based gaming uh, with exclude, uh, exclude Excluded the uh, four and five stars hotels. So it's a real thing. It's not a populist uh, move, like you know. To, yeah. to, to, it's a real thing. It's happening. It is. It is. It is uh, such decision uh, is is going on. It, it's not yet uh, uh, adopted by parliament at all. Of course, it is. Uh, it is hard decisions now. But of course, all the businesses in in big trouble. And uh, at this moment, I cannot say uh, the right and how the decision will be at the final stage, uh, but uh, of course, uh, at least Ministry of Finance not agree uh, to such uh, strict uh, decision. Uh, of course, uh, the Ministry of Finance is, is, is understand that uh, it should be some, some uh, uh, more changes in the law to, to protect more uh, deeply people from, from possible addiction, and, and that's all. Some, uh, um, Advertisement uh, issues and, and more, more something else, but not so strictly because last year it, it was approximately uh, it, it was more than eight uh, eight zero uh, million euros which uh, received the governmental budget from from the business, and of course as, as usually it is it is a big number and, and usually uh, we have not enough money for for government necessities. 
So it, it is it is it is one thing. Uh, okay, so basically, this 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 the first uh, thing is more or less killing land-based business, and the second part yeah. is actually mm -hmm. saving and up to Latvia's. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, I would like to say that it is probably a great challenge also for online gaming because uh, our law is, uh, I, I like to say, quite uh, welcome for uh, online business. Uh, we can make changes uh, in, in 60, uh, 2060, 2070, and, and like uh, last year, um, and, and even in this year, <laughs> some changes in the law. And uh, online making, business... Making it a bit cheaper would help, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and to the market, because it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I see, but, uh, but uh, what would I, uh, I like to say that uh, we are kind of welcome online operators to, to come to, to our uh, uh, office uh, to, to visit regulator. We are always uh, uh, can give you advice, can give you comments to, to our law, what you have to do to, to receive license. And, uh, I can confirm that. Uh, yeah, you are, you are always kind of welcome. But uh, I don't understand, and, and I would I would be very happy to, to hear what what is the reason why since we have so many illegal uh, operators which are trying to, to get the, the Latvian business, and uh, uh, I I'd like to say that we are already uh, working on blocking on illegal sites. Uh, nevertheless, how uh, our Lithuanian colleagues said that uh, it's it's not uh, possible to block all, and uh, of course, uh, it's it, it's not uh, our mission uh, only to block some somebody uh, illegal, but we are invited really to, to come and to get the license. Uh, and uh, I will be very happy to hear what are the main reasons why uh, it's not. Uh, interesting to come to, to regulator and, and to ask license and to, to come in. Yeah, that's, I think that's an invitation to, to, to have a discussion with Signe during the break and, and, and yeah. well, today and, and yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and especially in this uh, period when, when we have some, some trouble with business, we are very, uh, very open to hear what, what are the main reasons, what will be the uh, possibilities to, to propose changes to the legislation, to the Ministry of Finance, to Parliament, uh, to, to say what will be the, uh, some, some necessary opportunities to, to, to come uh, and to work legally. Uh, because the, the last changes, what, uh, what I, I mentioned before, uh, it was made in uh, uh, April 3rd uh, of this year, and uh, these changes are, are uh, yeah, a month ago, and, uh, but it is already coming to force. Not all, but, but uh, mostly of them. Uh, these are uh, additional requirements for blocking of uh, legal sites. Uh, it means that uh, uh, there will be limitation of citizens' ability to access uh, to unlicensed online gaming operators uh, more deeply. Uh, it means that banks and other financial institutions uh, are prohibited to, from processing payments between Latvian uh, players and, and uh, all the banks uh, should give information to the state revenue service about uh, players who, who use uh, illegal sites and, and make bets on them. So uh, there are uh, additional requirements to uh, internet uh, service providers for more, more fully comply with, uh, with the orders to block unauthorized sites. And uh, there are more uh, additional uh, uh, possibilities for uh, our inspection for regulator to, to ask uh, information, to, to uh, connect to this, uh, these um, operator uh, for um, service providers uh, uh, servers to look how they work, and of course we we have powers to, to in, in case of violation of these requirements, to make penalties, and these penalties are rather, uh, rather big uh, amounts, uh, but of course penalties are to our internet service providers, not to operators. Uh, yeah, okay, but um, this portion, of course, it's to the, uh, uh, the service providers, not, not the operators. Uh, it, Theoretically, it could be uh, that you would go after the operators who are you willing to block. 
So that's that's one of the one of the questions I would like to ask and, and, and my colleague from from back there from Sarainen actually she's uh, an associate with with Sarainen. and uh, if if not yeah uh, keeping with with you uh, could you please elaborate more a bit of um, going after the players themselves and finding them uh, that you have this new thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's also step in these changes in the law because uh, we have to to find also the players and we, we should uh, find uh, them. Uh, it will be uh, included <coughs> to state revenue service, of course, including banks' information, and financial institutions' information, who plays, who make mistakes, and uh, then we can look also in. Uh, from the site of uh, internet service providers, mm -hmm. on, on which sites these uh, people are playing really. And uh, then we have also a force in giving them administrative penalty for, for playing on the legal side. But, uh, to uh, the well, players. I, yeah, to the players. But uh, I, I can say I don't like it at all. Uh, nevertheless, it is law, and we have to fulfill them. But uh, I, I, I can repeat once more, I, I ask Come, uh, please come to the regulator and uh, find a way to, to get license and to work. Uh, of course, it's, it's not possible to block all of them, but uh, I I prefer the legal legal business and legal work. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, let's move forward to Linda a bit. Um, basically, you know the changes. So basically, your let's say clients have their views. Uh, your local clients, maybe your international clients, I know. Why you're working with, but um, how do you see that? What's going to happen? Um, what are the main issues currently, and you see what what may be other issues will come in the next in the near future? Right. So, and obviously, a bit, please about the good things too. <laughs> good things too. Please, good things too. Hi everyone. Hello. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, so we have different clients. We have international clients who usually come with questions like, oh, is this gambling? Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, can we advertise this? And we also have local clients uh, that also ask similar questions, actually. Uh, regarding this new regulation, uh, Kaito previously mentioned that uh, we are an online environment and we're fighting for clients not only, for example, in Latvia, but in uh, different places in the world. And uh, this current regulation kind of affect the specific Latvian customers. Um, th there's this uh, one thing I wanted to also mention. We have, um, uh, the players have to pay personal income tax in Latvia if you have winnings over 3,000. And it's like per game, per one. It's a relatively new thing. It's not a brand it's, new thing, but a relatively new it, it, it was a year ago. It was just, yes, it's since 1st January 2018. It's just if you start considering everything together, Okay, so players have to, Latvian residents, Latvian tax players have to pay income tax. Now they're actually, can be scared that they can be fined. Uh, if they, they are unsure if the website is or is not registered, they have to go and actually check. So uh, these kind of small things all together, they may have the impact on uh, consumers that they might be reluctant to actually play online gambling. Then again, if we have land-based uh, services closed, Maybe we can have, again, a different perspective. So from one side in Latvia, players could be reluctant to play. On the other side, if you're closing all the land-based services, then we can actually see an increase in online gambling. So it's like... Uh, but that's a speculation, or you, you, you have the numbers? Uh, well, you most probably don't have the numbers. Maybe yeah. you have you know, the, the, the numbers in, in Latvia, if that, that's a, you know, a direct conversion or not. Um, but that's that's an interesting point, actually. If you are. That's uh, speculation. Yeah. That, uh, that's uh, how this could develop. And just currently, yes, uh, we have this new regulation, which will be. It, 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 I understand it's fighting the illegal market. The illegal market share in Latvia for 2018 actually was 66 percent. We are number six. Mm -hmm. In 2017, it was 54 percent, while in Estonia it was 30 if the data that I read recently is correct. So we have to fight it. It's just a question whether this will help or not, and only time will tell. Okay, so basically, um, maybe you both could actually answer, try to answer Signe's question. Why do you think there are only so, you know, a handful of 
online license holders uh, in Latvia, what's prohibiting them to come? What's what, are, what you know? What incentives do they not have? And what's what's going on? This is um, this is one of my favorite topics. So <laughs> I assume that it's we will lack time. But, for you, but uh, yeah, this is. Uh, if I if I say it a uh, very kind of short way, then obviously the same as I uh, referred already uh, before in the morning session that all the environment it's not only about uh, uh, about uh, having regulation in place, uh, inviting customers, but uh, as there are so many details, uh, taxation, uh, uh, advertising, and, and so on, and based on that. Um, based on that, uh, operators or potential uh, businesses who are potentially interested of licenses, they are uh, considering that does it make sense, is it worth of taking all these, uh, these steps, uh, uh, including risks, uh, costs and so on, to enter to the Latvian market. And um, from my experience, I can say that when I started in, in uh, gaming industry, it was 2012, and uh, we got. Uh, it was another company I was working for, Olympic Group, that moment, and uh, we got license in, in Latvia, and uh, I was really like optimistic. Wow, now we're gonna do lots of things, and then we realized that hey guys, this is <laughs> this is not what's gonna happen because you have so strict limitations that principally, before when you don't have license, you have much wider options to run business. And then you are, when you enter to the market, get the license, and you are so much limited. This is actually yeah, the answer, answer to this this main. And I know, Signa, this is this is not even even question to you. You are doing great job with your team, but this is uh, this is question to to guys who are really making laws that you need to put it to context. You you can't. Uh, you can't, if you see a problem or you, if you see transactions from abroad, you can't uh, solve it this way that you just fill the wall and that's it. Okay, so uh, let's, let's, let's get into details, actually. Let's yeah, so let's, let's, let's go to the, into the details. What, what do you want? Well, you, know, you, know, you, see, you, you see Lithuania, you see Estonia, um, and obviously you see, you see that. But let's skip you know, uh, the other part of the world, the lesser yeah. part of the world. Like, let's say, obviously, in Poland, you know, uh, it's, it's better it's not to have a license. You know, to, you know, to, but um, uh, <laughs> so please go into, into, into the details. What do you see here is worse than in, in, in Latvia and, and this one? Um, definitely. Uh, one issue, not referring to these last uh, last developments, what are connected with these uh, land-based locations. One issue is that uh, when you uh, when you regulate uh, one specific, whatever uh, type of bis business industry, then uh, you need to give some uh, some freedom to entrepreneurs, to to businesses, to uh, to to run their business there. So it's, it's not that you only have limitations, but you need, you need to create this environment. And, and this is definitely uh, not in the best shape in, at the moment. I would name a lot of things, but... but uh, let's, let's say marketing. I have yeah, exactly. Marketing. Marketing, is, marketing is always very simple. So it's my, my, uh, my view about that is that uh, it's not that you, you should allow everything or something. It has to be limited. It's, it's still gambling, we need to keep in mind we are in gambling business. It has to have limitations, but it doesn't mean that it's completely uh, banned. Okay, um, Linda. Um, I, okay, so, um, the same, actually the same, the, the same question. Uh, the limitations, yeah. Um, marketing, uh, do you see uh, a problem with a sort of licensing for the software providers that you have a specific, that Latvia has a specific uh, license for software? Provider. So, is it that? Is it, is it, can it be seen as a problem for the software providers to enter the market? Um, marketing, uh, actually, being it, the entry to the market being well, relatively or uh, highly expensive. You know, is it a, is it a, an obstacle? Uh, the, the main obstacle. Uh, yes. So in Latvia, it's very simple in a way. 
because uh, no advertising outside of gambling premises is allowed, meaning that if you have a website, you can advertise only on the website. And even then, you can advertise only the name of the premises and your trademark. So that's it. Simple, right? In Estonia, I know you have stricter uh, advertising for games of chance, but still a bit broader and for totals and other stuff. You, you have more options how to advertise. So uh, maybe, maybe Sidney can comment on that also. Uh, yes, I have only one question. Uh, do uh, or Olympic group or, or uh, uh, Latsan group, do you have not advertising in Latvia? That's the thing, what I said before, that we have to be creative. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. Sure. When we are already in the market, then we are uh, very quickly uh, learning what are the market conditions and what are what is really happening in the market and, and of course we are doing I, i'm not hiding we are doing marketing activities in latvia please take it as i'm saying it's happening so it's uh, i see but, but it is not uh, uh, a uh, challenge to illegal um, gaming operators because we, we have well, no uh, every day we don't see illegal uh, operators uh, advertising in Latin. We see only legal uh, legal uh, operators advertising. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Can you, can you oh, it? Because yes. I, then we will have to move. I would have. I would want to move to to, to that actually. It's just advertising might be one of the points. Also, the fact that you have to be registered in Latvia. For example, if you work in that common environment, you have to have a company in Latvia. Mm -hmm actually have a license. So these kind of things might be cumbersome. Just, just, uh, just one comment that, uh, that this focus would be right, that uh, if I would have a uh, selection, what can I choose? Then definitely this current marketing environment, it can be more or less okay. But uh, all these, uh, these uh, movements, what started with going against the players, uh, this income tax thing, uh, uh, this initiative, what is uh, happening with uh, with land based right now? Because if it's happening with land based right now, how I know that this it doesn't happen tomorrow with all online? So this is this is clearly not good message to to all potential uh, potential operators to enter to the market. That's my my main kind of uh, of message about that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And I would like to move to, to Taylor Kirk. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I really like to, to have him in my, all of my panels, actually. So um, basically, I have a specific question. Um, as I told, you know, life is on fire, more or less. Uh, you know, uh, Sweden is on fire. Um, even, you know, Belarus is on fire for the last month because they opened up a bit. Uh, Lithuania has those small fires of their own. How come Estonia is never on fire? Um, <laughs> so basically, I, I, I know that they, I know that you did a great job in 2009 because th that's when I began uh, in uh, my things in, in, in Estonia in 2009. So you did a great job in Estonia at once. So it's never bad, but it's never great. How come is that? Because I wanted to, you know, let's say, I had, um, I wanted to have Victoria, have Victoria because uh, they are uh, a Lithuanian, uh, let's say, Lithuanian capital company, uh, uh, which got their license in Estonia, uh, and I think they, 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 they wanted, you know, that license to open up the doors to the dot com uh, world. So, and I was always the, the promoter of Estonia as a, you know, next Malta or even a better Malta, like, you know, uh, stuff like that. But it, eventually it never happened. Um, yeah, so that's, that's more, more or less, is it, maybe that's not your incentive. Uh, maybe, you know, please. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, uh, good to be here as well. And, uh, and really we're, uh, for a number of years, I, I have the good news that there are no news because our online gambling regulation is now a bit more than a decade old. There's a slow but steady uh, growth in, in the number of operators and in market revenue. And uh, yeah, it uh, never quite was our ambition of, of being a, a new Malta or something like that, because um, we're concerned about our domestic market, our domestic players, 
Uh, we try to keep our regulation as simple as possible, as, as welcoming as possible. And uh, I would say we're uh, we're pretty happy with uh, with how the how things are right now. So uh, yeah, well, basically, when I, yeah, I wanted to to, to know uh, there are no news, no like no. Um, uh, you evaded okay. the attention of politicians, uh, which I think is with the key to success. A, yeah, with doing a great job at once. You know, basically, uh, one thing uh, you know, people are asking: How come uh, uh, you know there's no extensive AML checks uh, in Estonia, while you know uh, Lithuania is completely uh, uh, you know it's not that bad as in Czech Republic, which is completely a disaster, but uh, in Lithuania, you know, it's it's, it's harsh. Uh, while in Estonia you, you did the, the, the job in 2009, and it seems that you don't have any problems to 2019, and you don't have uh, a, a, you know a need to change anything. And however, nobody else like follows your example. Well, so, um, I don't know if that's a question, but yeah, we we get a lot of a uh, lot of questions uh, coming in uh, regarding how. Uh, how our regulation works in, in this or that aspect, but uh, I mean, ultimately, it's probably the, again the question of, of uh, how politicians uh, decide to do things. Uh, we're going to have, as I understand, an AML KYC panel later today, but uh, uh, yeah, because we all our operators are required to to register to identify the clients, we use uh, mostly electronic state issued identification for that and this mostly works very well for uh, for uh, AML purposes as well um, okay so it's very good that I have you because you can you can always like you know uh, compare uh, the country so please so uh, my comment about this what you you were asking about numbers uh, I think this is uh, this is showing very, very clearly direction, and uh, I see that right now in, in Europe it's happening that there are like two type of, let's say, two type of direction, or, or maybe there is third as well, but about the regulation that, that what Estonia has been taking. You, you mentioned that Estonia, it's it's kind of new Malta, but it's not, not that many uh, licenses. Right now under Estonia there is 20 licenses. Yeah. yeah. This is the smallest market in, in politics, with 20. Under uh, Latvia there is issued uh, 10, yeah, exactly. Uh, in Lithuania less so. And from uh, last year, I can see already that there are uh, operators who are operating under Estonian license, but actually the market itself is Scandinavia, yeah, but it, yeah, obviously it, it must be like that because it's it's written in that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but it, it was like that for 10 years and it's only like you know, gradually going yeah, yeah. up. So it, it's, it, for me it's a change actually. Maybe I'm, I'm fast, but uh, for me it's strange that it's going like that gradually. Absolutely. In, in, in that sense, uh, that you most probably you expect to see it happening much quicker. But, but you, again, taking all this, this kind of background, what has been happening, many of companies have been running under Maltese license. And this was kind of uh, of uh, first option for, for everyone. So now I see that they are, are shifting and, and kind of directions are, are there, uh, different. This is like one thing. Another is that all the same well and, and uh, know your customer, and these, these processes, in Estonian law have been place in place already kind of uh, in in a smooth uh, smooth way and that's why this is that this is not the issue at the moment where uh, other uh, regulation have it. Uh, yeah well um, obviously we can't skip Estonia itself you know we're talking about uh, Estonia as a dot com which is actually not we have, we have to speak about Estonia to like a, a home country of 1.3 million people uh, you know we can't skip those people too so um, uh, you operate in, in Estonia for the Estonians. Yes, absolutely. So, um, what's good and bad there uh, in terms of the locals? Um, we uh, we are uh, under Estonian license. We are currently targeting only Estonians. So, in, in that sense, if you want to play our Estonian uh, Estonian uh, license, you need to have uh, Estonian ID code, and this is already limiting. So. 
what is good, what is bad? Good is, is that the uh, environment itself is clear. There are all these self-exclusion, everything is in place and, uh, and players feel safe. This is, this is very important when players understand what, uh, who is regulated, the uh, operator, who is... They, they don't, there, there is not even that much discussion about uh, regulated or not regulated. It's, it's not an, uh, an issue anymore. Maybe somewhere like in, in uh, poker communities, because, uh, because uh, actually I need to add that poker stars also has a stone license. It's, this is uh, actually, for a long time. Yeah, for a long time already. So this is also. So it's not, not that big issue anymore. And, uh, and this is referring to this uh, regulated market versus uh, non-regulated or, or gray market. Then obviously all these, uh, these kind of steps uh, ISP blockings, uh, payment methods, blockings, and so on. This is necessary. This is uh, this is like a must. But in the same time, how can we uh, how can we move more operators to the regulated uh, 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 status? Is that all this environment has to be attractive to them? This is this is very important thing. We we can't forget this. Yeah, but Estonians do they gamble? In, 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 yeah, in comparison, obviously, in comparison. According, to according uh, different uh, different statistics, what I've seen, and this is not only in politics, the the kind of overall percentage is, is more or less the same. Okay, there are different preferences. As in between, we know that in sports betting, basketball is yeah. number one. There is empty space, and then other sports. So these differences are, but of course, they can. This is. This is normal part of life, and, and this is this is also important to keep in mind. And, uh, and I think this today is it's not even need to need to say it that loudly. But gambling itself is normal part of life, and now it's it's uh, first question to politicians, but all the society how to manage this, how to regulate it in a, a smart way. Uh, okay, so I'll I will refer uh, now to to Taiwo. Um yeah, okay, so Estonian gamble, okay, but uh, for for I don't know what reason uh, there were I think one betting shop in a in a, a, a in a station. It was for I don't know one year. Then another betting shop in some kind of a living area, and it, it closed up. And you know what's 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 that? I think we largely skip the phase of betting shops and most of the betting which is actually growing very fast is, is taking place online. Uh, it was Olympic who introduced the concept of uh, sort of a sports bar which has taken off quite well and, and which we like to see because it's, uh, uh, I wouldn't say upscale but uh, respectable. Uh, Entertainment location, but um, yeah, we, we for a long time we only had uh, offline betting on on a racetrack. There was no this kind of betting shop culture, and uh, as we like to do everything online, we like to gamble online as well. And I'd, I'd also mention you you asked before what's good for the players. I think what's important is that uh, at least for us the winnings are tax-free for the players and also we don't uh, go after players for playing uh, in uh, in unlicensed uh, keep on going, keep on if, if they wish <laughs> keep on going uh, everything that's good in the summer. Um yeah so uh, basic and and this is um okay so you have a, you're from the ministry of finance yeah that's so correct it, yeah so you are the ones uh, um, let's say as a, you know, acting as a policy policymaker, so you don't. There is no really big discussion of what to have. To, what do you have to change and stuff like that for around a decade? That's strange. That is strange. Well, we just got a new government a little while back. Uh, I'm not sure whether anything will change uh, in the gambling sector as well. At least they gave a promise that there will be no tax hikes in, in any taxes, though I guess that's good news for the operators and for us uh, uh, and for ourselves as well. But yeah, for the I think for the latest decade, I I haven't had 
too many conversations with ministers of finance about gambling policy. And I think that's a good thing. There's uh, more leeway to... That's to a good way to, to finish up. <laughs> um, questions, please. We still have... Um, yeah, we, now we have uh, around eight minutes for, for the questions. And we have two jurisdictions, so please go forward. Thank you. Uh, just a question because I've heard that you will uh, close down every land-based operation. Is this just for uh, casino and gambling or is also betting or uh, those kind of, of shops affected? It's affected to all kinds of gambling. And they, it is it is said at, at least in, in legal decisions which is our capital, it said that uh, it uh, should be gaming uh, premises only in a casino or in, only in four or five stars uh, hotels. But it it uh, consists of to all kinds of gambling betting shops, casinos, slot slot halls and and what makes the difference between these four and five star hotels and uh, well operated by job? Uh, uh, I cannot say what what's the difference because from my point of view there are no difference where is uh, is operated in in, uh, in some some street uh, in, in the old city or, or in, in another place in the Riga, but it, it is decision of, of the Riga municipality. Is there a, a chance of that kind of a decision not entering into force or is it already? Uh, not, it, it is not yet in force. It, it, it will come in force uh, into five years, uh, but it is only already two years ago made decision. But uh, at this moment there are court cases and uh, of course operators are, are going to the court and uh, we don't know yet uh, what, what will be the court decisions and I, I suppose it takes rather a long time. Yeah, let's meet next year and see what's going on. I have, I have one comment. There is uh, also important to, to point out that these initiatives, uh, okay, this old one was, was already before, but now the latest initiatives came uh, uh, now before uh, elections of the Euro European Parliament. So uh, this is, I, I'm really sorry to say, but this is a simple way how uh, some politicians see that they can get uh, votes. This is, this is uh, reality, actually. Okay, so uh, more questions. I guess not. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you really, really very much. Let's move forward. To, um, I don't remember where are we moving forward. Ah, to tell. Oh, to my friend. Where are you?